So the school year is starting. Not a typical school year, obviously. Nothing's been typical this year, right? If I had a nickel, well, I've used that analogy a lot. So on this episode, I talked to Kristen Farnsworth, who has been homeschooling her kids, her three kids, while her husband, who is a travel nurse, has been on the road for the past two years. She travels with them in an RV. You can catch them on NoOrdinaryPath.com or their website, or I'm sorry, or their uh, YouTube channel, No Ordinary Path, where they talk about what it's like to be on the road as a traveler and a wife and a homeschooler and three kids and a dog in an RV. Alice All Access starts now. Let's first of all introduce yourself. Tell me who you. Not that we don't know who you are, obviously. But <laughs> okay. Tell me who you are and, and and how long you and John have been traveling. Then. Sure. Um, so I'm Kristen Farnsworth. My husband John Farnsworth is uh, the travel nurse. I'm the tag along. Uh, myself and our three kids, ages. Uh, well, now it's three years since we started. Now they are uh, first grade and fourth grade and sixth grade. So. What does that make your ages? Five? <laughs> it's terrible. You have a mush brain right now. This is our first week of school. So I'm a little, uh, <laughs> uh, so they're five, 10 and 11. And um, yeah, so we've been on the road for a little over two years, but this will be our third homeschooling year. Um, we started right when we left, basically. So we're going how, into start. How did that? So give me your, uh, like, you weren't a teacher before. No, no. Um, I never had any aspirations of being a teacher ever. <laughs> um, I was in banking long before I was a mother. And so uh, the crunching numbers is my thing. And I never thought that I would be a teacher. And in fact, when we were, before we started traveling, I never even had a thought of being a homeschool mom. I was like, oh, that's good for all those other people. I mean, I have lots of friends that do it. Like, Great, good for you. It's not my thing. Um, but then when we decided to travel nurse, um, all of a sudden I was like, I can do that. I can, I can be a teacher so that we can travel all over the country. And um, so I just jumped in and I started asking a bunch of my homeschool friends, like, I don't even know where to start. I was so overwhelmed with where to start. And, um, but I knew that if we wanted to travel, that I was going to have to do that. What were, give me like that range of emotions in the beginning, like understanding, <laughs> like I'm not a teacher. And <laughs> because I think we all feel it right now, especially with what's been going on in the world. Like my wife and I have both felt it with our son is we are not teachers and we do not have the patience to be a teacher whatsoever. Right. I really felt that. And when we, when we hit the road, we had two months before school actually started because we, we started at the beginning of the summer intentionally so we would have a chance to travel before we jumped right into school. And so um, I knew that there were options like doing public school at home. I knew that there were free options like K-12 out there that I could utilize and that the, the kids would have their own teacher and that was intriguing to me but I had enough friends that told me that it was really frustrating for them to go that route because like you have a schedule and you have to turn in your work on certain times and you have to it's, it's not flexible for a travel lifestyle and so it might fit the box for some people you know some people out there it might be exactly what they need because they might need that that structure of somebody else is teaching my kids. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was like, well, I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes with me as a teacher. <laughs> and so we chose uh, easy peasy all in one homeschool and it is a great layout. Uh, we, we do have a video that talks more about it. I probably won't go all into depth about that, but um, it basically allows you to choose what things that you want your kids to do. And we, the first month we did everything we were like oh yeah we got this we're gonna do language arts and we're gonna do math and reading and science and history and bible lessons and and all the like just everything that they had 
Um, and I've seen that a lot recently where people will post on Facebook. They're like, does this schedule look like it's too much for my kids? And I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> it looks like way too much. <laughs> we do school for like two hours a day now. Uh, but in the beginning, we were trying to hit all those things and it was very frustrating. And my kids, especially my oldest, was struggling with reading because the reading style was a lot of old English and it was very hard words and he hated it. And he's my biggest reader now and he loves reading. But my thing was if they, if they, they don't like it, the kids do not like it at all, they won't do it or they'll grow to hate it. And that makes your life way harder and more frustrating as a parent <laughs> to try to prod them to do things. Yeah. So that was what my friends, one of my mentors told me in the beginning was like, if it doesn't work, scrap it and do something else. <laughs> so yeah, the first couple of months were very, very frustrating for me because there was a lot of tears from my kids and from myself as we tried to figure out what works and is it okay to scrap it? I was so nervous about what if I scrap history and science? Like, are they not going to learn enough? You know, right. And we haven't, we actually haven't done a history and science curriculum for two years now. And I still think that they're ahead of the game. <laughs> what I think is interesting though, because I've, I have followed you for the better part of two years, right? As, as you've done, mm -hmm. as, as you have, you know, chronicled your life online through your videos and no ordinary path. It's, mm -hmm. The one thing that stuck with me, and especially with when all of this changed for us back in March, and now going into this school year, like you had said in one of your videos, like it, it doesn't necessarily, it, it, school, a, a classroom setting is a classroom setting, but anything can be a learning experience. Yes. And I can't remember, you were either at a national park, or you, you were somewhere, it was in one of your videos, and you were somewhere, and you're like, anything can be, they can learn from anywhere at any time. And I know- Yes. I never learned about national parks in school. And now that's one of the yeah. things I like the most. Yeah, absolutely. There are like a lot of things that you don't come across in a public school setting, but uh, like every single thing that we do can be like a learning experience for them um, from the way that we handle money on a day to day basis. If they're like in the public schools, they, they're not seeing how you have to deal with managing your money and that stuff on it or your time managing your time. But when they're with you all the time, they're learning just by having to be a part of mom and dad's schedule every single day, right. you know? And so, yeah, and, and, and national parks, their junior ranger programs are absolutely amazing and mostly free. Some of them charge money, but most of them are free. And you can even do some of those online. But even just going to the, just, just how the world works and how it runs, they're just, they're obtaining so much information just through living life with you. Mm -hmm. It, just as much as they would through a book or maybe even more because it's more, you can apply it more. Right. Yeah. Not that, and, and I don't want, I don't want this to be like an indictment on school systems or, or, oh, or no. whatever. not at all. I think, but everyone yeah. is, it, it's, this is a way for us to learn us in the school system or you with your kids or whatever, that there is a way to learn differently. It isn't necessarily have to be that way. And not that one way yeah. is right or wrong or, or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, I have teacher friends, I have um, teacher family members, and I am in no way, like I was, have never been against the public school system, like that was never what our intention was when we went into homeschool, it was just like our lifestyle. And I think that that's something to consider like right now is because like a lot of us are being thrown into this because of what's going around us in the world. Right. And it's not an attack against the public school system, but I will say that just because your child goes to a public school and you're choosing to do virtual schooling, you don't have to accept the virtual plan that they have for you. As a homeschooler, you can choose whatever curriculum that you want to do, especially if you're already going to be doing it at home anyways. That's one thing that I, we just released a video and that was one thing that I wanted to tell people is like, if you don't like it or you don't agree with it, and God bless those teachers, I know that it's very, very difficult right now to try to have a virtual classroom. But for parents that are saying like, oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind with this virtual stuff. Like it's, this isn't working for us. Like you have to do what works for you and your family. And if the virtual stuff works, awesome. But if it doesn't and you're struggling, finding something that works for you and your kids will put everybody's sanity at ease. <laughs> so. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So give me just a, a couple of tips that you've learned along the way outside of the anything can be a classroom thing, which I think is, is yeah. I mean, that's the key to it all. But give me some tips, things that you've learned along the way. Okay. Uh, well, right off the bat, I can think of uh, 
if you are struggling with one of your children, like specifically this week, uh, we started with Chloe at, with first grade. She had just kindergarten, which was basically whatever we came up with last year on our own. She has a little bit of a curriculum this year. And I butt heads with her, which is weird. I never thought that I would like butt heads with her. Um, but John ha does ha has so much patience for her and it's like daddy's little girl. So my tip is that if one of you has more, struggles more with a kid than maybe have the other parent try to help out with that kid, you know, and make it a, a joint team effort rather than just like one per person's the teacher and the other person goes to work, you know, like kind of try to, you know, trade off a little bit and switch it up. And then also just time management. If you start something, if you're not a morning person, I'm not a morning person. Like don't try to start school at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> start school like when everyone's fresh and when you are ready and able to like focus on it. And then if you come to a point where like everyone, it's everyone's unraveling, you can just choose to walk away and come back to it or start over the next day. Like you don't, the thing that's really cool about homeschool that I've kind of learned over the years is it's just, it's very fluid and there's not, it's very difficult to de-school once you've been in the way that school is supposed to go for so many years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. And that's, and that was one of the things maybe that, that my wife and I struggled with when all of this, when, when everything stopped right back in March and you yeah, know, it was okay. Now we have a, there's a curriculum at home that we have to follow. And we thought that's it. Like it has to be the schedule. It has to be a, you know, when he has lunch at, at the lunchtime or whatever. And I think mm -hmm. what we quickly learned was that might work there in right. that structure, but then it doesn't necessarily. And so we kind of came to those same conclusions along the way is, learning isn't a, you know, an eight to three thing or whatever. Yeah. It can be at any time with anything. And if it's not working at the time, sometimes it's just time to go outside and play or absolutely. Just, right. And then yeah. come back around to it. And also like, you can't beat yourself up as a parent. Like it's really easy to do and think that you're messing your kids up. But the truth is that you're not going to mess your kids up. Like you being there for any part of the day and helping them learn, they are learning so much more, with your one-on-one -on -one interaction, you're not going to mess them up. Like right. even, even if you skipped two or three days because y'all needed a break and you just had to stop for a minute, like they're not going to fall so far behind that they can't catch up. So you have to constantly try to remind yourself and be, bring yourself, reel yourself back in when you feel like you're losing it and just realize like, I'm not messing my kids up. I need a break <laughs> or my kid needs a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> I think we all, as parents, we all worry about that. But I think deep down, you're right. Like it, it doesn't. One or two days. I none of us. We could go back to when we were in elementary school or whatever. One or two days off like that. It didn't. It didn't mess us up at all. Right. I mean, that's right. things along the way. So yeah. yeah. It doesn't. And, in the in the end. Yeah, and I've even I've even heard of like students that, um, I I. I don't want to throw out statistics because I don't know the statistics exactly, but I do know that kids can catch up really fast. So even if like this year is this whole school year ends up being a madhouse while you're at home and it, and you feel like it's not working out. Like I do believe that they will catch back up. Like they're not going to be left behind forever. They'll catch up eventually because they like their brains are still developing. They want to learn. They want to, they want to succeed. Right. Even if they say they don't. <laughs> oh, I, oh, mine reminds me every single day. So, but in the end, I think he will do better. And, and yeah, yeah. so I, in the end, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. So, okay. Well, good luck on this year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to anyone that's trying this or that is yes. forced into this or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, I don't think, I think you're a hundred percent right. Even if this year does, you end up flushing this year or whatever in the end, it's not going to hurt the kids. They're going to bounce yeah. back just fine. They're, they're way more resilient. I think we were way more res resilient than our parents ever gave us credit for. And, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, back on through the years. So I don't, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. None of this is going to be easy. And I know John, no. John's job is, it hasn't gotten any easier. Your job no. hasn't gotten any easier. So, yeah. and so it's, it, we, we're playing the hand that we're dealt and, and that's just, that's kind of just where we're at right now. Exactly. Yeah. So. And if you have a really bad day, it will get better. Like there's always a new day. It gets better. <laughs> it, 
it, it's okay just to just to close the laptop and and just yes. and just be done for the day. Absolutely. So, awesome, <laughs> Kristen. Thank you so much. This was awesome. I, I think I hope this will. I hope this helps anyone that is kind of just on that you know that on the path, but they just don't know what or they're just unsure of themselves. Yeah. Um, totally. I hope so too. <laughs> and if you if yeah, there's a lot of good information on on their website, on their YouTube channel, noordinarypath.com. Is that yes. right? Or, yep. Yep. No. Yep. That's exactly right. And we have a, we have a road school page, but don't be um, scared off by road school because it is very applicable to homeschool. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> same thing. And then same every, thing. at least every week, right? You've got something new every week that comes out. Yeah, we do. We post stuff um, twice a week on our, um, on our YouTube channel. So I catch up once a week. Sometimes I watch three, three episodes just to just. To <laughs> but your YouTube yeah. channel, it, it is a it is full of good information outside of this too. What's it like to travel, uh, to be a traveler in an RV full time, to be married with kids, and everything else that goes along with that? Yep, a lot of good information. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Kristen. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. See you All later. Right. Thanks. Bye.